Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor, fret zero, otherwise known as open position, and fret 12, focusing on the C note. Get ready and some coffee. Now get pumped. Let's get ready. Now go. Because you know the world's going to hell in a handbasket. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. But the current administration is like, don't worry. All right, move on. Nothing to see here. Please disperse. Nothing to see here. Please. I've got a plan to stop the world from going to hell in a handbasket. I have a plan. You have a plan? By requiring you to pay extra at the grocery store for hand baskets. Resulting, it resulting in fewer hand baskets being used so that you little American citizen hellions have nothing to carry the world to hell in. Go to hell, go to hell, go to hell, 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 go. And even, and even if you do pay extra at the grocery store for hand baskets, we plan on putting holes in the bottom of the hand baskets so that the world will actually fall out of the hand basket as you try to leave the store uh, ra rather than being the world being carried to hell, which of course, uh, in my presidential view, is the American, the average American household. Well, it is going to hell in a bucket. I want to hold the handle. Because, because if the, if the hand baskets fall apart all over the parking lot, it'll help feed the homeless. By the way, do, do you have any chocolate chip? Do you have any chocolate chip ice cream in that hand basket before we f spill it all over the grocery store parking lot? Whatever. My my current administration has a two-fold strategy to stop the world from going to hell in hand baskets. We can't train a cat that quickly. Part number one: appease the crazies, and Part number two, death to hand baskets. Unless, of course, the hand baskets are being carried by the crazies, but that seems kind of self explanatory because, in that case, policy number one, appease the crazies, Trump's policy two, death to hand baskets. Plus, obviously, the hand baskets that the crazies carry are generally ticking, kind of like a human heart indicating that they're actually living hand baskets and therefore it would be immoral to kill the crazies hand baskets even if even if letting the ticket ticking the ticking hand baskets live is likely to make some people uncomfortable or possibly dead honestly it, it reminds me of that time you know that reminds me of a time no more cutaways stay in the present my courageous uncle was eaten by cannibals Re resulting from him bravely and and bravely defending a pair of of black lesbian unicorns during the war, boldly stating, "Leave those black lesbian unicorns alone. If you need food, then t eat me." Take me instead. Uh. So tragically, they did. I mean, it's just it's just like my dear old. Blue collar dad told me back in 52, son, those ticking hand baskets have the same natural right to live as the child that will surely soon be conceived from those five blue and orange bearded 300 pound men currently and crudely groping each other over there in the, in the gutter. Welcome the incomparable Helena hand basket. Hello, darling. On top of a pile of stolen groceries. And there's daddy. <laughs> now that's love, Joey. God bless him. That's love. Now that's love, man. Ah, the 50s. A more accepting time. I often wish I could go back to 1452. Back when my good friend Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Before getting eaten by cannibals. Dang Native Americans. Hold on. My caretakers are giving me a cue card to read. No, actually, I hate, I hate Columbus guy. I hate that black lesbian unicorn eating 
Christopher Columbus guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they ate him. <laughs> Stop talking. Oh, wait. The red color italic print means I'm, I'm not supposed to say that out loud. Wow. Looky here. Excuse me. Some lady's waving a waffle cone at me over there. You better watch out, lady. You've inadvertently woken the dragon. The dragon! I'm gonna take that waffle cone, make it mine, while sniffing me some hair in the process. Sail by night, he sail by day. Will somebody tell him he sailed the wrong way? Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. Let's go back to that first tab then to get that general overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes starting out in open position, which we defined as frets zero through three, remembering that this E represents the low or heavy string, the string closest to the ceiling on our fretboard on our guitar. And the funnest way to map out the notes in open position is to construct the chords from the scale starting with the one chord, the C major chord in this case, and then we mapped it out in open position, discussed it in detail. We then went to the four chord, which also has a major chord construction, same thing, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, same with the five chord, and then back to the two chord, which has a minor chord construction, as does the three chord, the six chord, and then the seven chord with the diminished chord construction, which we mapped out. If we were to map out all the notes and all the chords that we looked at in open position, we would basically have all the notes in the C major scale and related modes, which would look something like the blue notes here. We then wanted to jump to the middle of the guitar, this time not starting by learning that position by chord shapes, but rather by scale shapes, first the pentatonic scale and then the major scale and then we saw how we can connect that shape over to our open positions focusing in on each note within that shape and how we might tie that into the open position basically looking at modes that way but we'll talk more formally about modes later we then went to the second the next position up on the fretboard and did the same thing mapping out the pentatonic scale the major scale then seeing how it fits into the prior position and then looking at each of the notes basically each of the modes in essence within that shape and position we then did the same thing and the next position up and we mapped out the pentatonic major scale and then discussed uh, how each note within those basically the modes within it and now we're doing the same thing here on the, this position up on fret number 12 and this one is a little bit different than what we've done in the past because fret 12 as we can see here is where the fretboard is going to start over so we have the same notes from the nut over here which is uh which is the nut to uh fret 12 and so that means that this position which i'm going to call position number four is repeating the open position as we've discussed in the past although it repeats it can be hard to see that it is the same because the difference in the fingering because of the way the, the nut is going to be structured here so that's going to be the added little uh, complication that we'll deal with when we're looking at this position not only looking at it up here where we're actually going to have to finger through it fingering where the nut would be but also then shifting down relearning what we learned in open position but this time not by constructing chord shapes that kind of build all the notes in the scale but rather by formally going through the scale uh, over here so that's going to be the idea now let's go through the color scheme because obviously the color scheme looks chaotic but i think it i think it works here so so we put the, we put all seven notes underneath we're going to imagine all the colored notes underneath are blue so there's blue on the bottom line uh, so and then on top of that we put the green which is going to be the pentatonic five notes on top of the seven which fits perfectly on the blue notes and then on top of that we put the three notes that we're focused in on for the chord construction 
of the C. So in other words, we're looking at the C major scale and we're looking at the, the mode of the Ionian, so the C major mode or scale or Ionian mode, and then we can construct then the most important notes for the chord, which are going to be these three notes. So this is the first, uh, the third, and the fifth, which are going to be in light green. So in other words, when we look at this, our most important notes are going to be the light green, because we're focused on the C, and then the third as compared to the C, which is going to be the red, and then the next most important note is the uh, G here, the next important note in yellow. And then you could think of the other pentatonics as possibly like the next po most important, the dark green, and then basically adding the blue note in essence on, on top of that, which is the note that gets notes that get us into the major scale from the pentatonic. They all fit in on each other. So the seven, the five notes of the pentatonic fits perfectly into the seven notes. And these three notes, because we're talking about the major scale and it would also work with the, the six, the minor scale, those three notes fit perfectly both within the five notes and of course within the seven notes. Okay, so then w when we looked at these positions on the guitar, we're trying to break the guitar into four to five fret positions because the guitar is designed not to play like a piano as we're playing up the whole string, but to be able to play everything within a hand shape position. It's designed to fit our hand, obviously. So we jumped up to the middle of the guitar. We called that position one. Now, the reason we call it position one, and remember, as we, we, we can also call it a G-shaped position. That's going to be this oin over this red box. That's what the red box means. And notice that we always look at them. If you want to call it a G shape, you always have to kind of go back to the related major scale, which is what we're looking at here. So in other words, if you went to another mode, then you'd have to go to the related major if you wanted to call it a G shape is the general idea. We are in the, the one chord of a C major, so therefore we have the C shape that you can also use to name this. I'm sorry, we have the C major chord, which up here is in a G shape that we could use to name this area. Now this shape, you'll note, fits uh, within the five note pentatonic. It's, a, it's only a three note shape. It fits within the green five note pentatonic shape uniquely which is why we can name the five note pentatonic shape with like this G uh, shape. And it doesn't fit uniquely into the seven note shape. So that's why you, you'd kind of like to, to, if you're using that G to target where you're at, think about the pentatonic shape and then add the two other notes to get to your major shape. Okay, so that's the general idea. The reason it would be a G in that position is because if I held my G down like this, we have it here. If I move that G up to here, boom, boom, and then you've got these three notes in here, so you'd actually play it something like this up top, and then something like this down below. Now within this red shape, uh, notice I put the red inside on this side when it's overlapping, and then, it, and then it's overlapping with the orange shape, so it's on the outside over here. So that's gonna be the idea. So that's where the red shape is. And then this shape number one, then goes into shape number two. There's overlap between these two shapes. So within these two shapes, the red is on the outside. And then the then within inside is the next shape, which we can call an, an E shape. So this is what you might call an E shaped C major. And it looks like this because if I was to go back on over here, this would be the E major shape. And if I moved it up here, I'd have to borrow this off. So you've got that. Uh, uh, e shape, so it goes boom, 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 boom. That's our normal bar chord. Within here, it's inside of the red because this is in between both shapes. And then out here, it's going to be outside. And then we're going to go from that shape, which we can call two or the E shape, to shape number three, which I would call shape number three. You can also call it the D shape because if I look at this C, I'm looking at a C, but I'm looking at the D shape within it. So we're going from like, here's the octave up top. So there it is right there. So it would, I play it like this. So it would be then this C, that uh, G, and then this E. And then if you can grab that other C, you'd have to maneuver your finger in to do that. I don't typically do that because my fingers aren't that flexible, but you can see the little D shape up here. 
uh, with those three notes, which is the same as this shape down here, but we're leaning it back towards uh, this, towards this C. So that's going to be that one. And so again, uh, when we're leaning forward, the green is on the inside, and then it's on the outside where it overlaps basically with the blue. And then finally, we're on the blue shape over here, which is going to be what I would call shape number four, and that's going to be our point of focus. You can also call that the C shape, and we can call that the C shape because you can see over here that the C fits right here. This would be my finger in like an open position. The C, this would be the same blue on this side. If I move that all the way up here, you see the same fingering, boom, 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 there. Now that fingering isn't perfect to make a C on, on over here, but you could see the fingering, how the fingering works. It's not exactly a C major because we're missing the fifth because you'd have to mute that string, although you could ring it out open if you wanted to, <laughs> and then you'd be playing it an octave lower, but you'd get it. But in any case, that's going to be the, the, the shape that we are uh, in at this point in time. And, and the reason we want to play it up here in the 12th shape, of, even if some people don't have a guitar that really fits up here because you might be playing with an acoustic, is because you see the overlap. And that overlap becomes important when we shift to different keys because obviously if we shift this whole position up, then that's what would happen if you play like in the key of G or something. And so we want to be able to see the overlap going from this position to this position, how, how they blend together and how we can, we can transition between the two positions, which you can see more, again, if you used other chords or other uh, scales. So then obviously that also repeats this position number four here is also going to be repeating in the open position. The open position causing us a little bit more difficulty it's easier to play in open position because of the nut, and we can reach a little bit further, but our fingering, instead of being on these four places, are moved up here. So that actually causes a lot of confusion to try to recognize that this shape is the same here as it is up here. And that causes a lot of confusion because most people learn the stuff down here by just learning chords and and now that we learned the shapes it doesn't look like any particular shape that we worked with because my fingers are not in the same position as the shape if i was to play it in some other area on the guitar okay so that's going to be the the general idea now how can we practice this well one thing that we can do is we can try to practice everything within one position so i can play everything uh within this position or everything within this position meaning I can look at all these chord constructions, for example, and play them in uh, one position. So that's one thing that we can do. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that here, though, because we're only mapping out the, the chord of the, the, the major chord in this position. The other way that we can practice it is we can, we can go from the open position and we can jump around the open position because we, we are comfortable possibly with more chords more of these chords we're comfortable with in open position and then jump up to this position to kind of noodle around in this position uh, as well and then of course we can try to find lines blending this position into the prior position and see how we can go from one to the other as we kind of focus in on this c so that we can work our way up horizontally up, up the neck rather than just playing uh, vertically within one particular position. Now also just note that since we, these two shapes are the same, we can also play with like some symmetrical kind of uh, things, right? I can say, well, here's my C and here's my, my uh, F, you know, and so on. And I can try to play that here, right? And play those same shapes in terms of chords. So even though you don't know the chords up here, in other words, maybe you don't know them as well. We'll take a look at each of them as we go through these notes you do maybe possibly know them over here so then the, the the shapes are the same except that you'd have to convert the shapes over here to to bar shapes when necessary on this side right so you can play with that and we can also play with the idea that if i if i look at my fingering and i was noodling around in between positions i can see that i have the same thing going on so I can use some mirroring 
kind of thing and say, well, if I'm playing something over here, I could see that this box is basically the same, right? I might play just within like this box, right? Which is the same as this box. And I can try to basically slide that down here. And then go up here and kind of do the same thing. So you have that kind of mirroring thing that you can you can do because these shapes are the same and that can help us to get an idea of them being the same even though our, again our fingering is uh, a little bit different. All right, let's first go through and just finger through uh, in open position the scale. Now as we finger through the scale, we always want to start and stop on the note that we are in. So we're going to be in the, the C in this case, so I'm up here. So if I was just going to, to finger through this, I can count through it, which is, which is obviously in the C major. So that would be the one here. So I'd be saying, so one, two, three, four, right? Five, six, seven, eight. And that would take me to this uh, C. And then I can go up to this G and back. And I'm just trying to emphasize the starting and stopping on the C because that's the scale that we are in. So I'd say one, two, three, three, four, five. Four, three, two, one. That takes me back to this C, and then I'm going to play that one back up to this C, and I'm going to say this is going to be now eight because it's eight or one, so I find it easier to say, okay, I'm going to start at eight. So we're going to say eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that takes me to this C, and then I'm going to complete it by going back to this E and then up again. So now we're gonna say this is gonna be uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you also might wanna play your chords as you play that. So the chords that we see in here is is that C, you see the C shape. So we have this, this, this. We could finger it that way, but if I do that, we're gonna have to mute this string, right? So we just have three strings basically ringing out is typically how you would play that if you just want to finger it the same and that's totally fine to do although some people will frown on that and they say well you can't do that because you're missing a g but still you get you get two c's in it and you get the and you get the the third which gives you the flavor of the c now you could try to leave this open right <laughs> so it's going to sound a little funny because it's a different octave but it still works so you can actually get the full the full C with that fifth in there, you just get a pretty heavy, a little bit heavier of a fifth uh, if you wanted to do that. So that's kind of interesting up top when we happen to be in, up top in this position. Now we could also say, well, I'm going to grab instead this, this, and uh, this, which means I'll, usually I'll shift my fingering to grab this, this, and this. That's often a little bit less comfortable to grab that. Get that we could we could also grab just this bit down here which people usually see as a d shape so i can grab uh, this bit down here now that's a d shape because we usually see it as a d if i was to grab it you know up top and but it's only a d if i lean back to this one it's a d right but if i'm leaning forward that's the in between shape to the c so i can grab that and, and then I could try to actually reach reach up if I wanted to, to that other E over here or even to the C out there, but that's difficult uh, to do. So obviously most people will just play in that higher register uh, like that. And then we could shift our finger this way and put our fingers like that. And that's kind of giving us the full shape. So I'm more of a, this is now the low. So now we're picking up now I'm picking up th this, 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 and this, right? And sometimes sometimes people, when we get a little lazy with this shape, we miss this C because that, that's with the pinky. It's hard to reach sometimes. So if you don't reach that pinky and we just pick up this, this, and this, that's another common way that people play it. And you can kind of mute that string above it so that you pick up just those three, right? And so those are the, those are the main ways that we would probably play like the go to the end shape and a lot of times i'll just default to the normal c shape and just mute that string or even ring it out right now so that we can see uh, those two 
Okay, so then, so then, if we were to, if we were to then play, let's do a little bit of mirroring just to say, okay, if I was playing different chords over here in open position, I can kind of augment those to play over here. So if I had a C over here, I could move that same shape up here as we saw and just mute everything except those three. Sh three, it's not exactly a C because we're missing the fifth, but it still is got everything we need for a C. So then if I moved to to like the F, let's say, then I can play that same thing up here. So I go C to the F, if I could do that here. It's a little hard to play up here. You can fit your fingers in there. But you can you can grab that same F using the same finger. Or you could do the full bar chord. And then we could go, okay, what if I went to the G? Now the G is a little bit more difficult to get to that. So if I was to play that in open position, I'd have to be I'd have to be grabbing the G. And so the G is gonna be up here. I could go do 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 like this. Or grab the bottom bit down to here. So that's a little bit more difficult to play. We also have a G up here. That F this way. So if I went, that's just tough to do because it's getting a little cramped up there. But we have that right, and then so that's the G. If we went back to the D, this is a D minor. So if I went to the C, to the D minor, I could do that up here and say, okay. not the most comfortable one up here but you can you can play that i'm not playing the open d you could you get a heavy open d on the higher and then on the higher octaves above the higher octaves and then we have the e minor so this is going to be the e minor so we'd have to bar that off if we were going uh to play that up here right so if i was going from a c to an e minor i could say okay here's go to that E minor, but I'm going to have to basically bar it off to get that. Okay, and then and then the A minor, if I went from a C to an A minor, we can do that same thing here. C, A minor, which is like these three strings, which is a little bit uncomfortable uh, to pick up, or we can do the good old bar like, like that. So those are, so we'll talk more about those other notes once we get to them in future presentations but just if you know your notes over here at open position you can kind of try to strum it over here and then try to convert what you're doing to, to whatever you're going to do on this side okay so the next thing that we could basically look at is say okay what if i'm going to strum around in open position and then jump up to this position now, as we do this, I'm going to try to noodle. I'm going to try to do my the, the the mirroring technique and see if we can kind of noodle around. So, if I'm going to first focus in on this C, then I can see that I have basically this little box within here that we can play. So maybe that's the first place that we can kind of start as we jump back up and back and forth to try to to try to get an I, a feel for where that box is in you know both positions. So if I played it up here. And I over here, I also have those two open ones as well. So I could reach back to here by just opening up and having an open position. When I play that up here, starting here, I'm on this. And then if I wanted to play it, so if we go above it here, we can see this shape. We have these three up top, so I could play that like this way and kind of noodle around uh, with that shape. So here's my C, and we're up here, so I could be picking this. So if I was to do a similar thing here, I could say, okay, there's that. I could play this this way. I could play it then just with these three. And then if I wanted to, to grab these upper strings, I'd have this one. Try 
to mirror that down here. So then we could go basically below it. We could say, okay, what if I was going to move up and play on this shape here? So I can kind of mirror that down on this shape. So if I'm, if I'm looking at that shape, if I'm going from this C, notice that that shape is just, is just the bottom bit would be played like that, whereas it's a D shape. So if, if it was like, if I move that D down to there, I'd be fretting it like that. But to play that, that's just gonna be a D shaped C major, which is just the bottom of this shape. If I play that up here, then I have to play those three and I'm probably going to mute uh, the strings above it. So if I was kind of uh, noodling around that, so you might finger like these two boxes, you have a double stop, double stop, double stop back here, double stop, double stop, double stop. So I could be... And then the same thing down here, so if I was playing an open position like that, then back here I have double stop, double stop, double stop. Right, so I could do that. And I could play something like that here. back and forth going up in uh, the upper register uh, type of position and obviously we can then kind of noodle around in between multiple chords and try to jump up as we saw in prior presentation using a similar technique so that we can then target particular notes up here so I might be playing like a chords on this side and noodle around within here. here as we're just strumming in open position and then jumping up to this C. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, and and then, uh, then we could say, okay, how could we basically tie these positions together? So if I'm going to say this is my C, I'd like to tie it back from position four up here back to the prior position, position three. So within position three, we had this basically uh, D shaped, which looks like this. So we're looking at duh, 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 this is the primary C back here. And so then our question is, well, how can we noodle from this C up to that C? Well, we could say, okay, well, I'm gonna go from basically this position and maybe go down to get down to this C right here. And then possibly when I'm down here, I could reach up or walk my way up in essence to uh, that C up top. So let's say we're on this C, I could say duh, duh, and we could say, okay, if I'm on this C, then I can noodle around basically in this position and then walk down till I get to this C, you know, down here, right? So I could say, okay, well, if I'm in this C like that, that C, I can walk it back, and then up to, and then reach up this way, so I can go back the other way, I'm basically looking at my index finger again, so now my, or my pointer finger is on this C, so if I'm, I can see my pointer fingers on that C, and I know I have this box, so I'm just walking back now from uh, this position. So now I'm on fret 12. I can bring that back to here. And that brings me back down to this position. So I could start to walk up instead of going down to this C, maybe I can go up to this C up top. So now I can basically say, well, I have my same position here. I have my double stops all the way across. So if I'm playing this, I can go back. up to here and then and now I'm up to this position I can grab my C up the top there play it like that play it like this play it like that play it like this something like that and then if I'm going to keep on moving this back so now we're on let's go to the next position back so we're we looked at the fourth position the three position the two position has uh, this C up top. So that's gonna be our, our big uh, E-shaped uh, C. So up top like this, I can play it down this way. And now my finger, my pointer finger is actually here. So now I can kind of walk my way up to the bot on the bottom side of the guitar if I wanted to, right? I have this shape right here that I can play into. So now I'm, I'm right there, I can go, okay, there's my C. So I can do some double stops there. I can move up, double stop, double stop, double stop. And that takes me to this shape. back and we're going to say okay if I'm looking at that C and then I'm going to move it back from that shape to this shape so now we're on we're going to be on uh, this C which is reaching up to this C so this is our G shape this is in our possibly our most familiar position oftentimes but that C is actually hard to play when you're leaning it back this way <laughs> play this side of it so then if I'm playing something uh, within this side you might you might just play it like this is the A like that it would be an A when it, an A shape when it leans back this way when it leans forward this way that's why I'm calling it a G shape in position one or the G position and then again, of course, I can noodle around possibly until I get to that C. 
which is pro which might be my most comfortable maneuver, right? This is in people's most familiar shape, so I can play. And that brings me to this shape. So that would bring me to the position we were at before with the with the leaning forward shape this way. And so now I'm here, and then I can bring that down to again this note possibly. So if I'm if I'm playing here, we've got as we can kind of play through these shapes. This next one is an A shaped. We haven't played with it as much. We'll take a look at it in our next section, position five or an A position. But we can see within here that we have our C is right there. So my pointer is on the C again. So that would be the easiest thing for me to move up if I play this A shaped C. This is the same. The A shaped and the and the G shaped C. So that takes me to the, this C shape, which is leaning forward now, which is the forward leaning part of the A, and I can have that lean up. So right, and then I could try to get my this finger up to that C, which would be the easiest thing to do, which is some double. Right, just some double stops, or and that'll take me up to here for that C, and then I can bring that position up. open position this way and then now my I can my ring my finger that I can move most easily usually is the pointer so now I have my pointer down here and then I can move that maybe up into this little shape so I can move that up into into there pretty easily so here's my pointer I, know I have this shape gives me this like A shape or G shape now that I'm leaning forward, which I can easily walk up to this shape. Now I'm pointing again my pinky up to this shape, or I can point my pinky down to this shape if I wanted to go that way. to this now I'm up to this here right here now I'm within my position so there's a bunch of different ways that you can kind of walk through these positions but if you if you can if you if you see that that's your pointer your pointing position then you can kind of start to make your own lines going up and back through these positions so you know, C shape here I'm pivoting I can see that I want to pivot around this finger so I can play other shapes but then so now I just pivoted around that finger to that C shape. Now I want to get up to this C shape. I could do that by moving this finger down here, but I'm going to move the, the finger that's easiest, this one up top, until I get into like this shape, leaning forward. I'm just going to move into another C. up top and 
and now I'm, I'm hitting that one with my pinky though. I want to pivot around it to get to my ring finger up here. So now I've just pivoted around, so now I have my ring finger up here and my pinky on this finger. So now I'm saying, so now I'm thinking, well, how can I get the, my my pointer finger onto this C over here, or I could use these positions to actually walk forward. I could walk this forward, double stopping uh, up to this C up here, right? I could just walk this forward and then be in my position over here. Or if I'm in this position, I'm gonna try to get this pinky finger down to here, basically. pointers here and I basically can see my next C is right there so I can kind of noodle my way up to get my pointer finger to this second octave on the C so we could play something like you know this up here and then now my I'm playing a C chord here but I can basically walk my way up to different the different format of the C Just a couple couple ideas to kind of walk through the C. We've probably looked at the C most because that's going to be the, this position. We'll do the same thing in future presentations looking at the different modes, uh, the, the D next, which would basically be a Dorian.